If you only remember one thing I've taught you, it's this. Question everything. Why? No, don't question that. Question everything except that. So it's question everything unquestioningly? Yes, I think. Welcome to the video, guys. So yeah, we have new subscribers. Welcome. It was quite a shock to me that the channel suddenly picked up steam, but I am not complaining. Thank you very much. I decided to make a quick video about Dune. I'll have a, another video going more thoroughly into the Dune lore and discussing some of the things behind Dune later, hopefully next week. All right, so Dune has a logical paradox problem. This is a key aspect of Dune that nobody really seems to talk about. And what I mean is the implications of what Frank Herbert himself says here in the following clips. The problem with leadership is that leaders are human beings, and when they make mistakes, their mistakes are amplified by the numbers who follow without question. And that's why I say think for yourself, ask questions. Right, so did you guys catch that? Did you notice the issue here? The issue is quite simple. Basically, if you tell somebody to think for themselves, and then they do, are they thinking for themselves? That's the question. If you go ahead and tell them, don't let anyone tell you how to think. Question what others tell you. Think for yourself, man. Come to your own conclusions. That's how you should live your life, is by thinking for yourself. And then the guy goes, yeah, you know what? You're right. I've concluded that I should conclude things for myself. Thank you for telling me. Thank you. I'm going to do that. Compare this to the other response. Why? Why should I think for myself? If there are other people that are better educated on a subject, why shouldn't I just follow what they have to say? Why should I question them? Now, reflect on both of these responses. In which one was the guy thinking for himself? In the one where he agreed with the person that told him to think for himself or question what others tell him? Or the one where the guy actually did question what the original person said to him and concluded that he doesn't want to think for himself? In that moment, didn't he kind of think for himself? See, that's the paradox. There's a paradox of freedom of thought. You can't teach freedom of thought. You can't transmit freedom of thought to others. Because the moment you perpetuate the idea that freedom of thought is an important thing to have and society parrots that idea, that doesn't mean that they're actually thinking for themselves. It just means that they're parroting that idea. Freedom of thought goes way deeper than just thinking that freedom of thought is the right approach. The best you can do is give a general advice for someone to think for themselves, but you can never be sure if the person is going to think for himself, and you certainly can't systematize the education of someone thinking for themselves, because the moment it becomes systemic and the moment you make people study this doctrine of freedom of thought and you make them parrot, we should think, we should think for ourselves, we should think for ourselves, and the moment you turn it into a doctrine, then that's something that you're actually influencing people in how they think. And if you're influencing them to think for themselves, are they thinking for themselves? And if someone rebels against the idea that thinking for themselves is the good idea, are they refusing to think for themselves or not? This is one of the reasons why I actually think that Herbert's Dune is a fantastic book, because it does tend to conclude that dogmatic authoritarianism is inevitable. Precisely because of the fact that you can't teach freedom of thought. It's something that the person has to completely do for themselves. And if you try to make freedom of thought a prevalent value in a civilization's doctrine, you end up indoctrinating people into the idea that indoctrination is wrong. And you make people dogmatically anti-dogma. Because what is a dogma, right? A dogma is a principle that you cannot deny if you wish to be part of that group, right? And if you want to be part of the group of free thinkers, then you have to believe that dogma is a bad thing. But that itself becomes a dogma of the group of people that believe themselves to be free thinkers, or enlightened. And this paradox tends to show how any sort of systematized group of people has a tendency to have indoctrination, dogmas, and a method of influencing people's way of thinking. Even if the dogma is that dogmas are bad, the indoctrination is that being indoctrinated is a bad thing, and we're all influenced into the idea that we shouldn't let others influence our ideas. And although Dune and Frank Herbert's Dune is not a system of education. It is indeed a prevalent and popular message that then spreads and perpetuates its own spread as people start to read and perpetuating the ideas within the book. It is a message. It has a message that Frank Herbert wanted to tell, as he explains very clearly here. What does my fan mail tell me about Dune? That people read it many times, which was what I intended. That uh, people are thinking for themselves. I have a fan letter I got here from a 16-year-old who thanks me 
for teaching him that if he was going to make a life for himself, he had to do that, and he underlined it the second time. He says, I make underlined my life. Well, that's very rewarding to a writer to see that the message got through. So you see the issue. A young adolescent wrote to Frank Herbert and thanked Frank Herbert for having helped him realize that he should make his own life. But if Frank Herbert helped him realize that idea, that means that Frank Herbert helped make this young man someone who believes that he should make his own life. So did he really make his own life? If he received external influence in order to have that attitude, that's the paradox. And there's really no way out, not when human beings are inherently social creatures and we all depend on each other, even on how we think. And the funny thing is that this itself is very much explored within the Dune series as a whole. Getting into very mild spoilers, later on in the series, a specific character comes to the conclusion that in order to free humanity from tyrants, he himself has to be the biggest tyrant of them all. So tyranny is a bad thing, but through tyranny, he'll achieve good things. So does that really make tyranny a bad thing? And having this be the climax of the series, or one of the key, or the key point in the whole Dune series, in my opinion, makes it quite clear to me that Frank Herbert was aware to some degree about this paradox. And this paradox is so strong in society and in human history that we actually have had cults, and, and extremely strict cults, by the way, some were quite deadly, actually, based on the idea that we should all think for ourselves and that we should be enlightened. The best example is the literal cult of reason developed in the French Revolution, which was all about the idea that we should be revolutionary against traditional ideas and find freedom, etc. But it was associated with an extremely brutal regime that killed people that thought differently and it was very much the idea of a cult based on the idea that we should think for ourselves and that not thinking for ourselves is a terrible thing that merits the wrath of the revolution apparently the whole idea of the cult of reason is you have to have your mind free and be revolutionary and we will kill you if you're not revolutionary <laughs> this authority is telling you to not adhere to authority. Later on, the cult became the cult of the supreme being, having abandoned all its pretexts of, I don't know, freedom of thought. And another example is the positivist church. It actually has been quite influential in the history of my country of Brazil. But anyway, positivism was an intellectual movement created by Auguste Comte, a French intellectual, around in the 19th century. Positivism was all about how humanity should be guided by science, research, and free inquiry, but it pretty much ended with them founding a literal church of positivism, a literal religion of humanity, complete with prayers and sacramental rites and doctrines, etc., and abstract values as well that aren't exactly scientific, like altruism, order, progress, etc. These are abstract concepts. And like I hinted earlier, when I talked about the tyrant for freedom that Herbert created as a character, the paradox of freedom of thought is very much derived from the same principles of the paradox of freedom. Now, the paradox of freedom is a very well-established paradox in philosophy that was, that was elaborated on by Plato, and it's the idea that if everything is free and permitted, then the strong are permitted and free to oppress the weak, and thus freedom is diminished. And in order for you to preserve freedom, you have to limit the freedom that some would have to oppress others. But that means that freedom would then be derived from authority, that an authority would be integral to freedom existing. That's the paradox. Freedom destroys itself, basically. And freedom needs to be limited in its own freedom to not destroy itself. The fact that freedom itself has this paradox would then logically make us conclude that freedom of thought has a similar issue, which is what I was rambling on about a few minutes earlier. And I am of the impression that Frank Herbert is very aware of this paradox because the Dune series seems to be very much an exploration of how to make a free society with freedom of thought when dogmatism and authoritarianism seem embedded within nature and in the cosmos, in the very fabric of the universe, and when it seems so impossible for humans to escape. We cannot get out. A shadow moves in the dark. We cannot get out. Because even when someone wants to serve human freedom, he must become a tyrant, which is what the Leto II character is all about. However, since Frank Herbert is very much a man of the Enlightenment at heart, it seems quite clear to me that his conclusion and decision in the Dune series is f for us to take the Karl Popper 
route. And who is Karl Popper? Well, Karl Popper was an intellectual of the, of the 20th century, and he elaborated on the paradox of tolerance, which is very similar to the paradox of freedom, which is basically tolerance destroys itself. So for us to defend tolerance, we have to be intolerant towards the intolerant. But whatever you do, intolerance will reign, and everyone is intolerant. It just so happens that some people either don't admit that they're intolerant, or are intolerant towards intolerance, which is still intolerance, it's a paradox. A lot of the times, tolerance for one thing can only really be solved by intolerance for an another thing. So, for instance, we can all agree that racism is evil. Someone who is a Catholic would be intolerant towards racism because racism would be satanic. As it says here in this papal encyclical, written many centuries ago, racism is concluded by the Pope to be satanic. So, a Catholic who is not tolerant of racism, his tolerance for other people's races are derived from the fact that he he doesn't tolerate something that offends what is holy and what is in order from the Pope. So his intolerance towards a different mindset, i.e. racism, which goes contrary to what the Pope says, is the source of his tolerance for other people's races. And this is the issue that Karl Popper is trying to solve as well. I'm not sure if he does though. But Karl Popper decided that the idea was just to embrace the paradox and for us to go, yeah, sure, let's be intolerant against the intolerant. We're being paradoxical and contradictory, but that's the solution. And I could be wrong, and please let me know down in the comments what you guys think about this, but I think that Frank Herbert kind of goes this route. Yeah, freedom has a paradox, and we can't teach people freedom of thought, but we have to try. Very much similar to the Karl Popper route. Embrace the paradox. It's the only way, but it's a way where? Back to where you started? There's no escape, man. It's paradoxes all around us. And the paradoxes are barriers in the human mind that prevents us from making anything other than an authoritarian, dogmatic society, which will always win out in the end. And that's what we see now in universities. As in the name of tolerance, people are destroying statues and burning literature, etc. The difference was in the Spanish Inquisition, they were logical about it, because saying that different ideas are a threat to the social order and therefore must be stopped is not an illogical idea. Even if it's factually wrong, it's not necessarily illogical. But saying we must be intolerant to protect tolerance, now that is illogical. And a contradiction. I'm not saying that thought police is a good thing. I'm just saying what is logical and what is it. I'm trying to analyze to solve this problem that we have because the attack on other ideas was not contradictory, which is the case now with the paradox of freedom and the paradox of tolerance. And what is more fanatical than being so zealous in your conviction to a value that even though your value leads you to a new logical conclusion, you still go forward with that conclusion. So maybe being intolerant towards intolerance shows more fanaticism than being logically intolerant because you're actively going against logic itself in the name of your values. Isn't that highly fanatical? Now maybe there's a way out. Maybe the problem with the paradox is actually how we define freedom and tolerance. Maybe if we define these things differently, we can avoid the paradox. But as of right now, for instance, the definition of freedom that we have have right now, where it's freedom from coercion, freedom from necessity, freedom from limitations, that is freedom, that will necessarily lead towards the paradox of freedom. Because like I said, because if no one is coerced into anything, then some people will be free to coerce others. And only by coercing those who would coerce can you stop coercion, right? I hope, no, I hope I'm not scaring you guys. I'm explaining the limitations of, of the human mind here. I'm not trying to justify anything. I'm trying to create a discussion on this topic. And I really am trying to find a solution for this, because I do not think that totalitarianism is a good thing, for instance. And if we could solve this issue, then that would be awesome. And I think that's what Frank Herbert is trying to do with his novels. I think he is trying to solve the freedom paradox and the freedom of thought paradox in, in Dune. Whether or not he succeeds, I guess that's up for the reader to decide. But what am I going to do without you? As long as you carry that book I gave you, I'll always be watching over you. Like, you mean in spirit? No, turn it over. Oh. Well, that was very cheerful. <laughs> I can almost hear the sound of all the new subscribers I scared away. But seriously, guys, um, I just wanted to talk about this topic because there are already tons of videos out there describing the rich lore in the Dune universe. But this, these topics, power, authority, 
freedom, etc. This is what the Dune novels are actually talking about. And if I could, I would make seven more videos on the Dune saga, which is a series I find extremely interesting. And if that sounds interesting to you, then please leave a like and subscribe for the next video, which will hopefully be more cheerful than this one, and more related to the actual events in the Dune saga that we can discuss in detail as the nerds that we are. So hopefully I'll see you in the next video, guys. Peace.